So, since the end of the last episode, I've been doing a little bit of work trying to make the base look a little bit presentable. Spent a few hours on here uh, the other night doing a little bit of uh, decoration, putting down some uh, some new blocks, trying to make the place look a little bit nicer, you know, cleaning things up just a smidge. Um, I also threw down a bunch of extra sieves and filled them all up with iron stiffened meshes. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the last episode, we were still working with just seven iron stiffened meshes. And so on top of that, I've also uh, gone ahead and replaced all of the meshes in all of the sieves that we have everywhere with iron stiffened meshes, which does mean on top of that, that we just have a ridiculous number of like flint stiffened meshes backing up our storage crits here and i'm kind of in a mind just to throw these away i can't really think of a use that we're gonna have for any of these like we could put it in a heavy mesh but i we could just jump to iron mesh at this point and so part of me is just thinking that we'll get rid of those uh, but before we get uh, into any of the new stuff that i want to do in today's stream a quick rundown of what we've got here basically i think everything it's still pretty much in the same location. I did end up making this room just a little bit bigger. You can see here the initial like mob spawning tunnel is ever so slightly off center now. Um, and so we are going to have to do a bit of work at some point to move the mob spawner. But this uh, mob spawner that we've got here is very temporary. It's not particularly great. And as people have pointed out to me uh, in between streams, it doesn't kill baby zombies, uh, which is a big no, like a big downside, right? They just end up getting backed up uh, here underneath the punji sticks, which are only on the second block. And so if a mob is less than one block tall, they end up just sitting there and just clogging up forever, which is not great. Um, and also another problem that our mob uh, spawner has faced between streams is the fact that we don't actively empty it out. You know, there are no storage drawers, there are no like void upgrades. We're not actively pumping any of these loot bags out of that small storage crate. And so we just end up you know, with a, a, a chest, a, a crate here that is just completely fallen and mob drops just spewing all over the floor, causing lag, and we need to fix that at some point, right? So that's going to be something we need to work on maybe in today's stream, but maybe uh, in a future stream. I've also moved, I've moved some stuff, but not others. You can see like the cobblestone generator cell that we've got here has not been moved. I'll probably work on moving that in today's stream. And also taking a leaf out of Ninja's book, who is not online, but we do have so many people on the server now. It is insane. Hi and welcome to all of the new people uh, who have joined the uh, the Patreon in the last like week or so. It's been crazy. But um, Ninja had in his base a very similar setup where he had bonsai pots on top of a storage drawer. Now, I was a little dubious of this at first because the storage drawers only have four drawers. Right? They only have four slots for items to go in each individual storage drawer, that is. And so the bonsai pots usually output five, especially in the case of the uh, oak sapling here. It outputs wood, sticks, leaves, and apples, as well as samplings. But the key is normally that the uh, the bonsai pots will not output into, although they will continue to work and just ignore that extra output if you don't have a place for it to go. So it's not gonna back up the system in any way. It's not gonna stop producing wood. It will just not put the wood into the, the storage drawer. And from what, I, what I've been told, apparently just when the server restarts, it just deletes its internal inventory and will just continue to go. That's not what we're doing. Um, I'll break this open here real quick so you can see what's going on. We've got like a, a nice little layer of glass, um, which has been chiseled. And then under here, um, we've got everyone's favorite pipe. And this system is actually a little bit flawed. And one of the first things that I'm gonna do in today's stream is try and fix it up just a smidge. And to do that, uh, I'm gonna need some iron pipes. Now, one thing that I definitely do want to start working on very soon is upgrading our storage system. Right now, um, I did pick up our storage scanner. And again, I'm not quite sure where it is because uh, it's right here. The storage scanner uh, has been picked up. I do need to pull that back down pretty soon here. But all of our stuff is like a complete mess right now. Where in the world are my iron pipes? Those are the clear ones. We've got the pipe blockers, which I think we are going to need. Where in the world are my iron pipes? Do I, I definitely have them, right? Are they in here? So what I'm going to do real quick here is just to get a little bit more use out of our buildcraft pipes, which we are still using, uh, much to the dismay of some people in the Twitch chat, but that's fine. Uh, let me grab my buildcraft wrench, which is right about there. And essentially, the system that I have over here right now is using wooden transport pipes with uh, these redstone engines to pull all of the items out of a crate. The crate is getting those items, of course, from the hopping bonsai pots. Those are moving down into clay pipes. The clay pipes are there to make sure that, uh, where possible, the buildcraft pipes will attempt to, tr to put things in to the basic storage drawer. Now, the problem here, the, the end goal <laughs> of all of this is for all of the excess to go into a trash can that we've made from extra utilities. Uh, the trash can is super easy to make and essentially anything you put in there will just be deleted and permanently destroyed. Now, 
The problem that we have with this setup right now is that you'll notice that certain items are kind of bouncing backwards and forwards more than they should. Like items from, for example, this drawer will come down, they'll try and go into the storage drawer, and then when they can't, they will sometimes try and kind of go this way and bank along and maybe go up another clay pipe and then also not work. And so all we need to do here to fix that is kind of get rid of all of these cobblestone pipes and replace them with iron pipes to make sure that all of the items kind of flow in one direction, right? So we want something, I think, like that. I'm going to wait real quick. Is that correct? It's not. Let me do this. That is correct. Okay, so I want it to look like that like that, and then want to make sure, I think that should already be right. Yeah, it is, cool. So if we just put all of these down, I think that will work. And now what will happen is all of the items will flow out into the uh, the iron transport, uh, transport pipes, and then will automatically go in the right direction because they can't go back up, thanks to the fact that the iron transport pipes don't let them go uh, back in that direction, which is pretty cool. So now that, that is taken care of, let me bounce back up out of here, at least try to. Um, there is a much, there are much more efficient ways, by the way, of setting this up. This is a kind of a convoluted way uh, using buildcraft pipes, but I quite like it. You know, I, I kind of want to use some of those buildcraft pipes, so we'll leave that there. Uh, up at the top here, I've made a bunch more storage drawers. All of this stuff is made out of dark oak to try and make it look just a little bit nicer and kind of fit in um, with the entirety of the base. And my idea here is to put the drops from each of the different sifters into those storage drawers above uh, the kind of the sifting area here, right? So. My initial plan is to kind of have dust sifting over here and then maybe gravel sifting over on this side. Uh, because one thing that we found out in the last stream is that when you sift dust, you don't actually get many of the ingots, right? You only get gold, silver, and nickel, which is a bit of a problem, right? We need to sift dust because we need just a ton of redstone. But at the same time, we really need like iron, copper, tin, lead. We need all of those kind of things uh, to progress on and make more stuff around the base. And so... I'm thinking to start with, we'll do dust and gravel. Of course, eventually, we do want to be sifting like netherrack. We want to be sifting sand, especially. Maybe dirt, although I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff uh, that we're going to need from dirt sifting. Um, and so we'll, we'll see about that in the future. But to get started, I think we're going to go with dust and a little bit of redstone. And both of those are going to sift stuff, and they're going to put those items, hopefully into these storage drawers at the top. Now, all of the ores, much like we set up in the last stream, are going to get pumped around into their respective compactor. Those compactors are going to then process the ores uh, into ore chunks, place them in the magma crucible, this guy here, uh, turn those into liquid ore, and then pump them out into the casting table and, of course, into ingots. My plan right now is to go ahead and replicate this setup on the other side here so that all of the ores made from the sand will go to this setup and all of the ores made from the, uh, the, the gravel over here will be pumped to this setup and then... Ideally, what I'm kind of thinking of doing here is putting even more storage drawers above each side here, because you'll notice there are kind of these little, like, almost nether portal looking areas that don't have anything in them right now. Um, I built them mostly because I thought they looked good, but I'm kind of thinking that if we grab a little bit of dark oak here, what we can, that's not dark oak, if we grab some dark oak here, what we can probably do is make some more of these uh, two by two storage drawers and put those in up here. And I think that should give more than enough draw space for all of our ores, potentially. Uh, so let me go ahead and quickly just make a few more of these four by four uh, storage drawers. I think that is the recipe, it is indeed. And then if we go ahead and fill these in here, these are not particularly big. There's only a six block gap inside of here, which means we can only hold 24 uh, different items, but that should be fine. Now, of course, <laughs> right away, as I mentioned a second ago, these are only gonna sift, uh, only gonna sift dust and thus only gonna get uh, silver, gold, and nickel. But as time goes on, we'll probably end up pumping uh, more ores into this system as it gets faster and as we do more sifting and so you know we can we can definitely get away uh, with putting more stuff in there and also i think if i'm not mistaken i haven't tested it but i'm pretty sure that the way that i've set this up i should be able to connect all of these storage drawers here to one draw controller and just have kind of all of our stuff pumped to the same place no matter what so like all of the ores that are made in this casting table can connect to the same draw system as the one that's going to eventually connect up to this casting table over here and so hopefully that should work out quite nicely for us. I am missing just a couple more storage drawers. Thankfully, they are super easy to make now that we've got just a ton of wood. And I did specifically make sure that we are generating all, like I say, all of the different kinds of wood. We're generating four different kinds of wood right now. We've got oak, uh, dark oak, spruce, and birch. And my plan at some point, probably between streams, is to put um, four more different types of sapling over here. We'll probably definitely set up one for this uh 
spiderweb sapling just because it's so good at making that string for us um, and then we'll find you know three more saplings that we can put in here as well uh, hopefully maybe acacia you know something like that something that makes a nice color of wood that we can maybe put to good use uh, or maybe just use in uh, in auto crafting who knows uh, there is a max 12 block range on the controller. Yeah, I think that's it's 12 blocks in each direction though, right? So it's like 12 blocks away from the controller. So the max area is like a 20. I should really make a um, use my axe here. One other thing that I do want to do uh, in today's episode is that I would like to get some basic. Oh my goodness. I would like to get some basic uh, Tinker's Construct tools set up uh, as well because. I spent quite a, quite a bit of time uh, on the server between streams. If I go to the leaderboards here, I'm nowhere near the top. You know, I'm nowhere near uh, Kiss FC there with 67 hours uh, or Shaggy with uh, the same amount of hours there as well. Um, I played 15 hours in total. I have not streamed anywhere near that much. But in that time, I have gone through way too many tools. Like the number of iron hammers and iron pickaxes that I made between streams is ludicrous, especially when you've got Tinger's Construct in a pack and you can just make tools that are infinitely reusable. There's really no excuse for, um, for, for using, you know, that much iron or that much any resource really uh, to go through and, uh, and use all that. One other issue, I'm, I'm kind of jumping all over the place, I know, but one other issue that I noticed between streams and something that we are going to have to try and fix in today's episode or in today's stream is, is the fact that the sifters, um, I think it's specifically the ones that are directly on top of uh, the sieves here, the mechanical user, when you put stuff in here to sift, it does sift it, which is nice, but a lot of the resources fly out at quite a high velocity. I'm not quite sure what makes it happen, but they fly out so fast. Now, there are a few things that we could do, I think, to, uh, to fix this issue. One is to kind of board up the front, and that's kind of what I've been doing between episodes. I've just been placing down a wall of stuff to cover this up, but... Uh, in reality, I don't really think that's going to work long term, and it's not going to look very good. So my next thought is maybe to upgrade our hoppers, our vacuum hoppers here, because right now we are using uh, these vacuum hoppers from Open Blocks. And as people did point out in previous streams, the item collectors from actually additions, I want to say, random things, these guys are much faster. And so I think if we can make specifically an advanced item collector, it might be fast enough to pull it in before it flies out. Um, I'm going to give it a try and see if it works. If it doesn't, we might end up putting like glass along the front of this. Um, the only problem there is that I have used these uh, like c cylindrical logs here from uh, missing pieces, which are uh, really easy to make, by the way, if you want to make these as well. You can basically take any vanilla block and just craft it uh, like this to get the uh, the cylindrical version. I've used those kind of all over the uh, the base here uh, to look like they're kind of holding up different parts. So I think it should, uh, I think it looks quite nice. I've thought about putting glass panes here, but there aren't any ways of getting like chiseled glass panes. And so I did put like, I did test putting glass panes along the front, but it just kind of looks a bit, nah, I don't love it. It looks a bit bad because of all the uh, like specs of, of like whatever it is that's inside of the glass. You know, it, it just looks pretty bad in my opinion, like this thing here, this texture um, in vanilla Minecraft. Um, so let me see here. Let me first of all, get rid of some of the stuff in my inventory. And also uh, let me get this freaking storage scanner back down. This is not going to look great yet. Uh, but I do need to find a new location for it. But for the time being, I'm just going to whack it down here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this side is set to uh, export the energy. And then I'm going to do a quick 20 block scan. Uh, just, I'm going to make everything rootable, right? Everything rootable, all rootable inventories. Do I have to click on these individually? That's fine. Going to make all these rootable uh, just so that, oh my goodness, there's so much, so many inventories that I need to make rootable. Oh my goodness. We're definitely going to have to uh, invest in some kind of like basic uh, refined storage or applied energy 6.2 system. So it's like some point soon here because there is like too much stuff in all of these, uh, all of these drawers and crates. Uh, but let's just go to all rootable here real quick. And let me see about upgrading these vacuum hoppers, because uh, I think that might help with our current situation. Also, uh, you may have noticed I kind of moved everything up by one. Uh, I moved all of the vacuum hoppers and all the storage crates up just by one block. Um, and that is to make sure that we can kind of hide all of the pumps here because this pipe does have four redstone engines around that one wooden pipe, pumping all of the stuff out of the small storage crate item collector now thankfully because we have uh, all of this lava getting ourselves six obsidian really shouldn't be too big of a deal and we also do have quite a bit in the way of ender pearls now and so really getting these shouldn't be anywhere near as difficult as it was before and before i do get into that i am running a little low here on these cooked apples and so all i'm going to do is just quickly shift k compress all of that cobblestone into these uh smeltable 
stone crafting tables, which I'm then going to use to cook up a quick stack of apples here, just to make sure uh, that I am ready for when I run out of uh, food and need some more. There we go. Getting ready for the future. Drop those back in there. And let's grab a couple of blocks of obsidian real quick, shall we? Requests TPA. Oh, is that me? Except. Is he? Oh, I see him over there. Look at that. Unsubbed. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, my goodness. Look at this guy. Oh, yes. Look at this. Varys' favorite food. <laughs> oh, Varys. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Thank you, Shaggy. Thank you for the uh, the supply of food. I love it. I love it. I especially love the renaming there. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, yeah, let me uh, quickly kind of reset up uh, this little... Uh, obsidian making machine that we had here before that looks something like this again i do kind of want to move this and we will automate this um, at some point in the near future to kind of make sure that we don't have to keep building this over and over and over again everything every single time that we want to get uh, obsidian uh you could just make the ignis extruders to make obsidian for you mm, that is a good point uh, the ignis extruder does require like a constant supply of lava right but um you are correct in that it is easy enough for us to make lava now and thus uh, we should probably do that um, one thing that I am thinking about doing is like here, uh, we've got this energy cell. Obviously, we don't need this energy cell to be here, right? Like to make this look a little bit nicer. Um, what I could do is just kind of get rid. I don't want, I'm going to move this again, even though I've just kind of quote unquote set it up by clicking all those boxes. Uh, if I move this to here, we can make this look a little nicer and a little bit more uniform just by putting that back and then moving the energy cell to the back here, like putting it down like that. The energy cell doesn't really need to be seen at all. Um, and so if we do something like that and just make the front here blue, we can put the Spectre Coil back on the front like that. And that will continue to provide power to all of our machines whilst looking just fine, right? And so um, on this side, we're going to have another casting table, another magma crucible. We don't need to have another induction smelter. And so we could put something like a pulverizer there or maybe even an igneous extruder there that is just constantly making obsidian and pumping it potentially into a storage drawer right there. But uh, we will see. We will see. For now, let me take my seven obsidian and quickly craft that up into advanced item collectors. And let's find out uh, if we can actually pick up all of these items faster than the man mechanical user spits them across the room at us. So hopefully we can. I'm really hoping hoping we can. Is the pineapple pizza gone? It's right here, Varisk. It's right here in my inventory, ready for you. Uh, also, people have told me that there is a better recipe for hoppers. There is. You can make a hopper with uh, five iron and two uh, oak wood logs. You don't actually have to um, craft up the chests beforehand like I've been doing over and over again, just from memory. Um, and so if we wanted, what we could do here is just quickly grab two more logs, taking us to a four in total. And then if we just do something like this, we can get ourselves uh, all of the hoppers. Well, if I do that, we can get ourselves the two hoppers uh, without having to make the chest before it, which is quite nice. And then upgrading those to advanced item collectors is super easy uh, because it's just two glowstone and then one redstone torch. So I will take four of you and then two of you we are missing one stick but thankfully at this point in time i think we've got maybe like ten thousand sticks across those four storage drawers and so if we do this and this and this that's going to get us two advanced item collectors which hopefully are going to do the job here of picking this stuff up faster it's also a lot smaller and therefore looks quite a bit cleaner five by five is fine now this is a five by five area here uh, so a five by five radius in all directions is perfect and so if we go ahead and put some dust in here i'm really hoping that it collects it before it comes flying out it didn't I mean, I guess what we could do is we could bump the range. It's kind of, it's doing, like, you can see the items working against the collector because they do still fly out, but they don't fly quite as far. They, they don't make it to the uh, the nether portal there like the other ones did. And so I guess what we could do is just bump up the radius. Like, what direction are we moving in here? This is Z. And so if we bump up the Z direction to, like, 10, I think is the max. That, that does actually collect them. Now, that does mean that anything else that we place around here or anything else that we drop around here is automatically going to be sucked up by this um advanced item collector here but i think for the most part we're not really dropping anything that we don't want to be sucked up i also really do quite like that um it kind of takes them instantly um 
it doesn't maybe look as cool as the vacuum hopper, which slowly pulls all the items towards it. Um, whereas this one, you can see it just like the items will sit. And then after a few seconds, like after a second and a half, it just pulls them instantaneously uh, into the small storage crate. I think these are actually a little bit better um, when it comes to server side lag. And so having those uh, set up should make life just a little bit easier. And then, of course, we will do the same thing over on this side as well. Whack that guy down and then bump up the Z radius to 10 just to make sure that it grabs any of those kind of like scraggly little ends uh, that fly out. So now that's taken care of, um, we've got the advanced item collectors. Those are up and running. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I would like to make a draw controller. Not only is it a quest, um, which also I think I do have a quest left to complete, maybe. I don't. I really thought I'd done it. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, we've got two quests here from uh, Mystical Agriculture, which I will quickly claim just so that we can open up these loot boxes and hopefully uh, grab some cool new items. We've got two more regular speed upgrades from Extra Utilities, uh, which we can put uh, into these mechanical users here, just like the other ones, like these 11. We can put these two into here. It's not quite as good as the 11 that we have in that one, but, you know, it's a little bit faster than it would be otherwise. And then we also got a mana lens of efficiency and a mana lens of velocity, both of which are actually going to come in quite useful uh, when we start working on Batania, so I'm very happy about those. But, like I was saying, the next thing I want to do is I want to work on getting a storage door controller, this guy uh, over here. Also, I should mention, actually, there was another quest that I have completed uh, between episodes. I did make a compacting draw. Uh, this guy over here is indeed a compacting draw. For those who don't know, uh, it takes in uh, things like cobblestone. You can also put in like ingots. If you put ingots in here, uh, they will show up as nuggets, ingots, and blocks. Right now, I'm using it as uh, a storage method for our cobblestone. So you put the cobblestone in, or you can have the cobblestone uh, go directly in from the cobblestone generator, and it will turn your cobblestone into, it will store it as simultaneously normal cobblestone, compressed cobblestone, and double compressed cobblestone. The reason I made this is quite simply so that I can pull it out as compressed cobblestone. It saves me the step of pulling my stuff out and then shift keying it into compressed cobblestone before I then hammer it down into gravel, dirt, sand, and dust. It just makes life a little bit easier in that regard. Uh, but following on from that, after we open yet another two speed upgrades, which I will of course put into my mechanical user, Following on from that, the next thing I want to make is a draw controller from storage drawers. This guy right here, this is going to allow us to very easily connect up all of our storage drawers and is actually not all that hard to make. So if we grab some stone here, grab some sticks, grab some redstone, and also grab a tiny little bit in the way of nether quartz. We do have a few quartz blocks here, which I'm going to quickly uh, unchisel and then craft back into normal quartz. Uh, I chiseled those objects. I was I was contemplating using them around the base. Decided not to go with it. And so if we go ahead and quickly craft up uh, two, well, first of all, six redstone torches, and then followed up with two redstone comparators, and then a draw controller. After a diamond and a basic draw, I'm fairly certain that, yeah, we've got a basic draw lying around in there. And then we should, if I'm not mistaken, have like four diamonds, seven diamonds. Look at that. Oh, look at that. And another thing that we should definitely do once we get our first Tinker's Construct tools, which I'm definitely working on in today's stream, is take down this nether portal because the nether portal is just... I couldn't get rid of it. I didn't have a diamond pickaxe. And so when I remade the base and started working on trying to make things uh, look a little bit nicer, the obsidian portal was just in the way. Like, it just it, it stays here. So uh, for the time being, that's going to stay there, but I will move it in due time. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that the, uh, I've used a lot of stone brick, um, seed brick even, uh, around the base as kind of a decorative tool, but it's also used to make the Tinker's Construct smeltery. Uh, for those who don't know, you can put cobblestone or even compressed cobblestone uh, into the smeltery and then auto pull that out into seared stone, which you can then chisel up uh, to look like the seared brick that we're using here for the Tinker's Construct smeltery and also around the base. Now, this uh, smeltery right here isn't actually this tall. Um, it actually only goes to about here. I think if I get rid of this block, you'll see that, uh, yeah, this is just cobblestone. And so what I'm thinking here is I'm probably not going to make it max height simply because of the fact that we really don't need it to be that tall. We're not going to be using our smeltery all that often. And we're not. We're also not using the smeltery on mass either. And so I don't really think it makes much sense for us to go that tall on the smeltery. And so instead, I think I'm going to leave the area above here empty and clear and instead i'm going to put my storage draw controller up here and kind of have all of our stuff pumped into it so my thought process is that if we place our draw controller kind of like right about 
here, like that, you know, it's still behind the uh, the drawer there, but we can still connect it up to all of the other storage drawers uh, using some trim. Trim's a block from storage drawers uh, that allows you to connect certain storage drawers to other storage drawers um, without actually making storage drawers, if that made sense. I said the word storage drawers an awful lot in that sentence, and hopefully that made a slight bit of sense, but if it didn't, never fear. Hopefully it will make sense in just a second here when we actually make some of that trim like so, real cheap, just some uh, planks and some sticks. And essentially here, if we throw this down between our draw controller and our storage drawers like this, it allows the controller to connect up and access all of those storage drawers. So for example, if I were to now double right click on the storage drawer with my oak wood, after putting a bit of oak wood into one of these storage drawers like so, it should take all of the oak wood out of my inventory and place it into that drawer if it's connected, which it is. Nice, and so now if we go back around here, let's take a peek. Look at that, we got oak wood in there. Take it out, there's our stack back, cool. So, now what we need to do is make a bit more trim, because what I would also like to do, if possible here, is connect up uh, these storage drawers as well. So we'll have like a little bit more kind of running around the back here, connecting up this set of storage drawers and that set of storage drawers. Hello, my friend, welcome, glad you could join us, um, to the main controller. Uh, like we said earlier, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these are only 10 blocks away from this, um, and so they should be well within the range of the controller. Uh, you've got a 12 block radius around the controller, so 25 by 25 area that you can build within um, and still connect the, the, the drawers together. If you try and go further than that, the, the controller just won't connect and won't register those drawers. Uh, there goes my pickaxe again. And for the time being, because I want to make some Tinker's Construct tools, I'm going to just quickly use my iron hammer to, uh, to finish this off here. The Enderman was after storage drawer advice. That sounds about right. You know, I am the person to come to when you want storage drawer advice, right? So here is the storage drawer. We're just gonna run some trim along and around like this. It's quite a long bit of trim. And I don't think I've ever actually run trim this far, but I'm fairly, ooh, I don't wanna do that. I'm fairly certain it does work. I don't think there's a limit really on how far the trim can go outside of course, the maximum range of the, um, of the draw controller. So if we just do this and we kind of just connect this up to there, I'm fairly certain that will also connect up. Let me just test that real quick. If I do something like this. No, I only want to put, I want to put one, one piece in there. No, I do not wish to, no, no, no. You don't understand again. I would, I would like to put less than everything in there. There we go. And then I would like to place the rest in via the draw controller. Nice, it works, cool. So we're gonna do that on the other side as well. Perfect, look at that. Exactly the right amount of trim as well. I love it. So they are on, they're all now connected. My next question is, can I access my storage drawers using my storage scanner? So for example, if I were to place something that I only have one of, like I've only got one of these better questing uh, devices here. If I put that into there and I go over here and I go ahead and scan the radius. Does that register the draw controller is my first question. I'm gonna assume that it, I'm gonna hope that it does, it does. And if I make that rootable, oh, look at that, it does, I love it. So now really all we need to do is start moving certain items up uh, into those drawers. For example, over on this side, we're gonna put some ingots in, uh, which have like one ingot in each drawer here. So we'll start with something like iron. I guess, I guess it doesn't matter what we start with, right? Just as long as they all have they won't draw eventually, that should work out quite nicely. I'm also thinking of uh, moving, I mean, I guess actually looking at this, I could probably get away with big draws as opposed to little draws. Let me see here. There aren't that many ingots, right? If we go to uh, gravel and we look at what we get, actually, let me go to iron stiffened mesh. Now let's have a look what we get when we sift. I don't think we get that many ingots. We get aluminium, nickel, tin, osmium, iron, lead, silver, gold, and copper. That's nine, right? That's nine. Aluminium we've already got. Tin we've already got. Osmium we've already got. Does... I think we only need nine and then Eulorium potentially for 10. So if that's the case, then we've got six on either side. I might actually just replace these with 
standard, and these are going to fly everywhere, by the way. <laughs> Usually not a great idea um, when it comes to storage drawers, but actually those are all going to be in here now, aren't they? Uh, that's fine. Oh, that's where all of my glass went. Of, co of course. Oh, gosh. Um, and so actually, I'm going to replace these just because I think that the uh, the larger storage drawers do look a little bit nicer. I'm also very thankful that when I vein mine these, it didn't delete the trim as well. It makes sense that it wouldn't. The trim is a different block, but I was a little worried there that uh, it would go ahead and just throw all of the, like, break all of the trim all the way back and, uh, and just destroy everything. Thankfully, it didn't. For now, uh, the next thing that I kind of want to work on before we take this any further is I would like to get myself uh, some form of actual legitimate set of Tinker's Construct tools, right? Because I've got this hammer and I keep making new tools and I hate it, right? So, chat, this is where I need your advice because I never know what I should make my Tinker's Construct tools out of. Okay, pause the video, pause the video. So this is Isaac from the future talking now. I'm editing the video as we speak. And I may have made a bit of a mistake here asking the Twitch chat what we should make our Tinker's Construct pickaxe out of. Not because they give bad advice, because they actually do give quite good advice as to what pickaxes uh, and what materials we should use and what materials are good and what different materials do. But it does mean that we spend like 30 to 40 minutes uh, in this stream trying to figure out and trying to pick which three combinations of materials we should use to make this pickaxe. And so um, I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of what we eventually choose. Uh, eventually, I end up going with an Alumite pickaxe head. That is an alloy from Tinker's Construct made of aluminium, obsidian, and iron. It's a nice balance between toughness and speed. It's got quite a bit of durability without giving up too much on the speed front. We go with a wooden binder, which gives it the ecological trait, which means as long as the pickaxe is on my hot bar, it will continue to heal itself over time, which is quite nice. means that we shouldn't have to repair it all too often. Uh, maybe we won't have to repair it at all. It really depends how much I end up using the pickaxe. And then finally, we go with a magical wood rod. This is made out of magical wood, which you can make by crafting together a bookshelf and a golden ingot with 4 XP. And essentially, the magical rod gives you a bunch of extra modifiers. You'll see that we get five in total on this pickaxe, but the trade off there is that it makes it magically brittle, which means you can't make the pickaxe unbreakable, which you can normally do by reinforcing um, a, a, any tool, I believe, five times with the reinforcement upgrade. Um, and so we do get those extra modifiers, but we trade off the ability to make it fully unbreakable, which means we are going to have to continue to repair this tool uh, forever going forward here. And so yeah, that's the tool. We're going to jump on in the stream to the point where it's done so that you don't have to watch 35 minutes of me trying to figure out what material to use. If you do want to watch that, I'll put a link in the description down below to where you can watch the full unedited stream and you can just thoroughly enjoy the 35 40 minutes of me painstakingly trying to decipher the twitch chat and figure out which materials i want to use but without further ado on to the rest of the video he's done it it's done it's done <laughs> end of end of end of pickaxe debate we could like the paper didn't give us the modifiers we wanted uh this will work right it's got a mining level of cobalt yeah it's not as fast as i'd like um and so i might put some redstone on it we do have five modifiers um we could use some modifiers to make it more durable which is possible um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and oh gosh look how slow this is there we go it's gone though nice okay so i will put that nether portal down when i find a place for it uh for now what i'm thinking about doing real quick is i did end up using the magical word because we're not going to make it we're not going to make it unbreakable that's that's out of the question now it's not going to be unbreakable instead what i'm thinking is maybe we take like a diamond or an emerald i think emerald like, diamonds give it plus 500 durability, right? And emeralds double the durability, I think is how that works. Uh, let's have a look here. So, tool station. Let me see what I can throw onto this guy. So, diamond takes its durability up to 1230, uh, whereas the emerald takes it up to 1100. How does the uh, the emerald work? I thought the emerald doubled it, but I guess that's not how that works. At least not anymore. Um, so, I guess we'll throw on a diamond to give it some uh, extra durability. Why not? I'm also contemplating putting some redstone on there. Plus 50%. Mmm. So... Like now, if I was to put it on, that's not 50% though, is it? That's not six, like 600 would be 50%. Or is it 50% of the base amount? 50% of base. Mm. Why not both? We could put both on, honestly, and get it up to 1600 uh, durability there. Although at this point, I think it's still worth, oh, you can't put another diamond on, right? Sure. Um, let me get some redstone. I'm going to put some redstone on there just to make this thing a little bit faster. Maybe like use one or potentially two of our, also, <laughs> we need to get rid of these. Um, use like one or two of our modifiers for durability and uh, not for durability so for speed because i'm a big fan of speed so that gets us up to 45 so the attacks the mining speed goes up to 12.75 i like it and then i guess we'll go in with individual bits of redstone here i might use two modifiers for it honestly though 
Uh, nice. Okay. I like how I like how that uses all the redstone now as well. It doesn't make you wait. Uh, let's see. How fast is this thing? That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, everything above a thousand uh, durability is virtually unbreakable as long as you have it on your hotbar. Mm, you mean because of the fact that we've got ecological, is it? So it's going to kind of slowly but surely repair itself. Like we got 1,227. If I give this a second, is it going to come back to 1,200 and more than 27? eventually or does it need to see sunlight for that to happen i never know uh, in these packs anymore what like the requirement is for the ecological upgrade to work but anyway um i guess we've got so many modifiers we don't have that much redstone though is the problem right like we've got some redstone but not nearly enough to um actually that's gonna be a ooh, oh 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 we are gonna run into a problem here and that problem is that we are not gonna that these this this system is not set up for this uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this is uh, this is a code red. Give me a second here before uh, this starts to cause some immense amounts of lag. Hold on, hold on. Give me all this freaking useless glass that we've made. Let me freaking get rid of it all. Yeah, the next thing I think I want to work on is actually fully, uh, like, starting to automate some stuff, right? Like, we've, we've got half of the automation here. We've done this in a bit of a weird way in that we've got the back half of the automation. We've got the setup ready to sift, and we've got it ready to collect and pipe to smelt, to process, to all that kind of stuff. It's all set up. But what we don't have set up is the ability to turn our cobblestone into gravel, gravel into dirt, dirt into sand, sand into dust automatically, right? And to do that, I, I I went to the Discord, which you can join, by the way, discord.gg slash GOC. And I was asking people, what is the best way of doing that? And a bunch of people pointed me directly to the sag mill um, because I was originally going to go in straight for something like the auto hammer um, from X Compressum, I think it is. Uh, this one over here, the auto hammer or the auto compressed hammer. I also thought about getting like the pulverizer. You can use a pulverizer uh, to turn cobble into gravel, gravel into dirt, dirt into sand, sand into dust. You get the idea. But... People said the sag mill is useful because of the fact that the sag mill uh, can automatically process compressed cobblestone into compressed gravel, compressed gravel into compressed dirt, compressed dirt into compressed sand, compressed sand into compressed dust. If we grab one of these real quick and press U, you'll see here that only the sag mill, you know, the pulverizer is not there. Uh, there is a compressed hammer that we could use, but that outputs nine gravel. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to use the compressed hammer and then recraft the gravel into uh, a block that's compressed and then, you know, put it into another compressed hammer and so on and so forth. Whereas the sag mill uh, compresses or uh, processes even one compressed cobblestone into one compressed gravel, which you can then put back into another sag mill to turn it to sand and then back into the sag mill to, uh, to create dust and then back in the sag mill uh, if you wanted to again. And I, I didn't even realize until now, but one of the coolest things is the fact that dirt is not in that chain. It goes cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, and then sand to dirt, uh, sand to dust. Takes out that middle step of dirt, which is quite nice. And so that goes kind of all, all the way, which is awesome. And then all we have to do is kind of uncompress the dust at the end when we need it because we can't sift uh, compressed dust over here. But I think that's going to be quite nice. Now, the problem, of course, is the fact that the sag mills are a little expensive. And, you know, we're going to need quite a few of them if we're going to get all of this set up into their stream. Now, NYO has changed a bit uh, in 1.12. I haven't played a whole lot with it. So we're going to have to figure out how this works. I think we have to start by making the simple machines. I don't think we can jump straight in with the normal sag mill because of the fact, uh, first of all, it requires this energized bimetal gear, which requires energetic alloy nuggets, which require energetic alloy ingots, which um, I guess we could do in the smelt reaction now that I think about it. I don't think we have to make the alloy smelter to make this work. Destabilized redstone, molten gold, and energized glowstone uh, could work here, but... We do need to get an industrial machine chassis. Although we've got induction smelter, simple machine chassis, and then industrialized powder coating. This is made with crushed lapis, quartz powder, organic black dye, and then organic green dye. Organic black dye. I have no idea how you make this. It's made only in the alloy smelter. Is that like, this is the only way we can do it? So I guess we kind of do have to make at least a basic alloy smelter. If we're going to do this. Um, thankfully, the simple alloy smelter is really not too hard to make. Uh, it requires one simple machine chassis, uh, three of these normal furnaces, two iron nuggets, two stone gears, and a bucket. Now, the one thing that we don't have right now out of this whole recipe is the grain of infinity. You can get these through sifting, um, and so eventually we'll just get them uh, in a storage drawer through sifting gravel. But before then, we have to go down to bedrock and light bedrock on fire with a flint and steel uh, to get ourselves our first grains of infinity. So let's grab our flint and steel. 
Let's grab our new pickaxe. Let's also maybe grab our hammer. I'm not quite sure. We might, we might use that. And let's start making our way down to bedrock. Now, I'm going to dig down in this direction because you will notice that we've also got an Isaac's Station waypoint down there. Um, and that is because um, Electrified, one of the people on the Patreon server here, he's not on right now, but he had the idea of setting up a kind of rail network. Uh, he wants to set up a big old train station around Spawn. I think it's set up over here. Or he's kind of working on it over here. There is no bedrock, Isaac. What? There's no bedrock. Um, and you can see here, these are all the coordinates of some other people's base on the server. Um, mine's over here at the end. Look at that. Boom. That's me right there. It's official. Uh, the coolest Minecrafter. And so the station is going to be right down at bedrock, right? This goes quite far uh, down. I think it might actually go all the way down to the bottom. There's no bedrock. So how do I have to... Oh, oh, please don't tell me that I have to sift gravel in a diamond stiffened mesh to get grains of infinity. Is that really how that's going to work? Oh, that could be really bad. Uh, so yeah, they're working on building a train station down here. I do like it. Electrofried is over there. Gaming on Caffeine and Excellius are over here. So one of these will uh, eventually lead to my area. I don't know if it might lead there right now. I'm actually not sure. I should probably get a cart and, <laughs> and try it, honestly, like as opposed to just running along it, right? Ooh. Oh, modular cart. Hold on. Hold on. Does this take me to, look at this car. This car is, look at this. Oh, I love it. Can I get in? No, don't, don't leave me. How do the heck does this work? Do I need to read this? Car controls, space faster, control slower, uh, hold at junction, left, forward or right, right click cart and click mount button to enter. Oh, add some fuel in the inventory for the cart. Ah, I see. So if I put some fuel in there and I click mount cart, and then go, space faster, go. Does it have to be moving? No, this way, enter me, go, go. <laughs> How does this work? I really want to get in this cart. Put in the call, press space bar. Oh, he's done it. Keep going, keep pressing space bar to go faster. Oh, he's done it, he's done it. F1 to get the full experience. I don't know if this actually takes me to my base or not. I'm really hoping it does. I keep pressing space to, to, to go even faster. I don't know how, I think it might be a max speed though. I had no idea you could do this with um, Steve's cards though. That's cool. The fact that you could um, have players ride. Pressing space, does it increase your speed? I'm pressing it. You should have grabbed a stack of coal. Is it that far away? I really hope not, otherwise I might. <laughs> Oh, the four call might make it there, right? I actually have, I'm pressing, does it go faster than this or is this max speed? It's far. <laughs> okay. So we got quite a way to go, I guess. That's max. Okay. It is quite far away. Oh my goodness. Oh, but look at this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's not the music I want. You know what that'll do? That's probably really loud. I'm going to turn that right down for you because that's probably extremely loud. Oh, it's not that loud, actually. Can you hear that? Oh, you guys can't even hear the music. Oh, it's just for me. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a second, chat. Give me a second. This is on-the-fly editing. Who needs to do editing in the past anymore when you can do it? This is the music I got downloaded. <laughs>